In a world of ours filled with sins and sorrows, diseases and pains, poverty and shame, Will you be found lacking in sin? In the book of Matthew chapter 24, the Bible says, In such an hour you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Some folks that you will know. And little moment from now, he that shall come will come. He will not delay. Who spring surprises on that final Your life is time. Will you miss the rapture if he comes today? Is your name written in the book of life? If not, this is your time to repent. Rapture culture. Genesis chapter 12. Do we have Genesis chapter 12? All right. We are reading from verse 1 to 4. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee. And I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and cause him that cursed thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him and Abraham was 70, 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran shall we bow our heads in prayers mama pray over this world Father, we ask that auction be given to your servant, that today it will not be you, him, it will be you. Nothing short of that will happen today. Pass through your servant to us today, in Jesus' name, I pray. Can you do that amen a little better? <clears throat> we are looking at the testament. That is a series we began a couple of weeks ago. And we shall be pushing it a little further this morning. I told you by way of defining the word testament that it is a statement of the wish of someone especially how he wants how he or she wants his property treated or shared after death I also said the testament could be represented with one word will it is a synonym for the testament then the last definition I gave from the dictionary we're looking at chambers is that a testament is an agreement an agreement or a covenant between God and man and uh, I alluded to one great scholar called Edwin Hattil who defined testament as a covenant or an agreement between men or between man and God. The testament is a covenant or an agreement or a contract between men or between man and God. And the parties to the testament are bound by the terms of the testament which means once you enter into that covenant you are bound by law to fulfill the terms or obligation 
of the covenant now today we are looking at I, I, I did a lot of work there when we spoke last I'm not going back to that today we are looking at testament obligation testament obligation don't forget I told you that the parties to the testament are bound by the terms of the obligation to the testament we shall be looking at man's obligation to the testament and perhaps some other time we shall be looking at God's obligation to the testament if we go back to where we have read you are going to see that in verse 1 man's obligation and perhaps responsibilities to the testament was clearly clearly spelled out verse 1 says now the word now came following from what happened in the last verses of chapter 11 Abraham had just lost, lost his father Terah and he had also lost his youngest brother Haran because Terah had three sons in order of their age you have Abraham you have Nahor and Haran but before Haran died he had given birth to Lot and of course as God goes giving back to Milka that became a wife to one of the brothers of Abraham now after the death of his father uh, uh, a terror verse 1 says now the Lord spoke clearly to Abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you now Abraham God was about to enter into a covenant with Abraham I told you I cited about eight covenants entered into between God and man in the first series of this message is that correct do you remember good and i told you we are going to navigate through abrahamic covenant and we shall emerge at the new covenant now god told abraham get thee out abraham came from a very idolatrous background the people of the the, the, the the people among whom Abraham lived or Abraham lived it was still Abraham at this time were very idolatrous they were given to all kinds of worship they had several idols they worshiped the sun god they would find they worship virtually everything or anything but Abraham there was that desire in him that that longing there was that search in him because the innate idea of God in man the inborn concept of God in man will make you know that there is a God beyond creation that was what accounted for the drive in Abraham in search for God and God tracked it and spoke to Abraham get thee out of thy country thy kindred and thy father's house that 
therefore what God was telling Abraham is that one of the things you must do to enter to see the testament with me is that you must leave where you are for where I want you to be you must come out get the art means come out come out of your country because I want to give you another country come out of your kindred come out from your father's house because I want to raise a new family for you leave your location for the new place I have ordained for you Abraham was flourishing where he was he wasn't a beggar he was a flourishing fellow in the land of all of Kadi. but God told him come out you must change your citizenship to live means Abraham change your citizenship to live means Abraham change your location to live means Abraham come out from the people whose lifestyle you are used to you must change your lifestyle you must change your thinking to live means break connection with your generational link with your ancestral link with the people by bet you were bound to you must come out from among them because i want to create a new family and give you a new father and make you a man among men in the face of the earth so abraham what you've got to do is to live and when he told him to live abraham knew the implication with me from now on i am no more a citizen of where i came from i'm about to take up a new citizenship i'm about to take up a new kingdom i'm about to take up a new family i'm about to take up a new father and abraham left the land of all of kadi because he made up his mind to change his citizenship and let me tell you for you to be a party to the testament i am talking about today you must be ready to leave you must be ready to change your citizenship if you do not change your citizenship you cannot be a party to the testament now by law when we say citizenship we are talking about a status of being a legal member of a sovereign state with all the rights and privileges attached to that status and for you to become a citizen there are about three or more ways by which citizenship can be actualized one is by birth two is by marriage three is by naturalization now that of birth listen carefully because I told you that Abraham was told to leave his country for another country which means you are taking up a new citizenship Abraham was told to leave his kindred and leave his father's house he left the known for the unknown to a land that I will show you and I told you leaving your country means dropping your present citizenship for a new citizenship and I said to us for God to enter into a contract with man that man must be willing to 
drop his earthly citizenship for his heavenly citizenship now i told you also that citizenship can be acquired by three major ways there could be more one is by birth that of birth has two branches or perhaps more i am not a lawyer branch a for you to be a citizen of any given country there are variations depending on the immigration laws and policies of those country one you must be born in that country is that correct in the past once you are born in that country citizenship was automatic but when they not discovered like somebody said when hunters when 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 bird knew that hunters have learned to shoot without missing they learned to fly without pitching when some countries discovered that some persons were just taking advantage of the lacuna in the immigration law they discovered some people would just get pregnant when the the, the, the the pregnancy is about four months seven months eight months they will just get a visa fly into the country and give birth in that country and then i said oh, now nah, i was born in britain i am a citizen of britain now there are other processes if you are born now in some countries citizenship is no more automatic the child must live there for a certain period of time then you now apply but the point i want to make this morning is that for you to be a citizen one it must be by birth now in john chapter 3 verse 3 the bible says except a man is born again he cannot become part of the kingdom of god paraphrased by me it means that for you to become a citizen of the kingdom it must come by birth you must be born again you must be born into that kingdom and jesus is saying if you are not born into the kingdom of god you cannot be party to the testament if we are here this morning and you are not born again i call you by the word of the lord to surrender to jesus christ so that he can change you and burn you into the kingdom of god because without it when we shall be discussing the benefit of the testament you are going to be excluded you must be born into the kingdom of god by a process of surrendering to him when you surrender your life to jesus by acknowledging his sacrifice on the cross of calvary what happens he comes and admits you afresh you know the god must ask a question will the man enter into the mother's womb when he's old and jesus told him that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit it is a process you cannot explain but the moment you open up your mouth and confess jesus as lord and say now i want to change i want to leave my former country i want to leave this world that i am and i want to enter into into a, a, a relationship with god what happens jesus comes the holy spirit comes he gives birth to you afresh as he gives birth to you afresh the nature of sin that was in you before will be destroyed that was why apostle paul that got warrant from jerusalem to go and arrest people that were preaching christ on the road to damascus very close to damascus the kingdom light which is the word of god shone across him the moment he recovered and he accepted jesus as lord 
everything they hated about Christ, you know, transform that into likeness, into passion for him. That when they go to Jerusalem, uh, uh, Damascus, the gospel for which he wanted to arrest people, he found himself preaching that same gospel. That man is born again. He has received a new nature. That is why if you were a thief before, the moment you are born again, the desire for stealing dies and you have the desire to live right. If you were a fornicator, if you were living boyfriend and girlfriend life, the moment you are born again, the yoke of fornication is broken. The yoke of smoking is broken. You receive a new life. You receive a new nature that agrees with the nature of your father and you become a new man. And so the Bible will say, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. If you must be part of this covenant, you must be ready to be born into the family of God. The second way citizen by birth can also come. We are still dealing with birth. I told you birth has two branches. Is when in the past it was only the father if your father is from a particular country and he marries somebody from another country when he gives birth that son from that union is a citizen of the father's country but when advocates for women liberation and women equality with men had their sway it became equal whether it is your father or it is your mother if you are a nigerian a man and your mother if your father is a nigerian and your mother is a uk citizen and you are born by that union you will be eligible it is not automatic you will be eligible to apply for green card in the united kingdom or united states now the second way by which citizenship can come is by marriage by marriage if a young man from nigeria flies to us and marries an american lady some time ago it was automatic in some countries perhaps it's still automatic but you'll be eligible to apply because by that marriage being in union with an american citizen you'll be eligible to apply for american green card so that you cannot be recognized as american citizen citizenship by marriage now are you aware that the moment you are born again you are engaged to be married to jesus christ people of god are you aware the moment you are born again you are betrothed in marriage to jesus read for me in second corinthians chapter 11 verse 2 you are going to get what i'm saying there second corinthians 11 2 quickly who is reading read with a mic second corinthians chapter 11 verse 2 listen carefully listen carefully please for i am jealous over you with godly jealousy for I have exposed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have exposed you. The word exposed. Who has another translation? Who has NIV? Who has. Uh, okay, please let him have the mic. Let, let's get the meaning of the word exposed. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promise to I promise you to one husband. I promised you to what? One husband. 
church to what one husband so expansal means promise to marry there are translations do we have another translation there are translations that use the word betrothed some use some use engaged who has another translation quickly Let, let's get close to him let's get close to him do that quickly don't, don't, don't break what i'm doing yes okay the revised southern version okay i feel a divine jealousy for you i feel a divine jealousy for you for i betrothed you to i Christ betrothed you to present you as a pure bride to her one husband take that again please for i betrothed you to yes. Christ to present you as a pure bride to her one husband i betrothed you i betrothed you to Christ to present you as a pure bride to who one husband one husband who paid our bride price with his blood can we go to first corinthians chapter 6 first corinthians verse 20 quickly do that for me quickly if you see it we are bought with a price therefore glorify God in where your body which are God's now if you look at Matthew chapter 25 verse 1 to 13 there was a parable Jesus used to illustrate our betrothal to him the parable of the ten virgins five were wise five were foolish but the ten were in procession to meet who? to meet who? the bridegroom who was that bridegroom in that, mar in, in that parable? Jesus Christ who was the ten virgins? the church now in, in, in Revelation chapter 19 verse 9 can, can we look at that Revelation 19 verse 9 can we do that quickly oh, me. Revelation chapter 19 verse 9 yes and the angel said to me and the angel said to him write this write this blessed are those who are invited to the marriage blessed are those who are invited to the marriage the marriage supper of the lamb the marriage supper of the lamb and he said to me and he said to me these are the true words of god these are the true words of the lord now i, I had to take you through this scriptural journey for you to understand that the citizenship we have was not only by birth it is also by what marriage marriage and our status now is that we are engaged to Christ Sure.